Okay, so hi, my name is Vian Kotze and uh, I went to the Shibaro Institute of Technology High School Summer Internship 2019. So the reason for going there, well, first of all, it will help me greatly to get into an overseas university and overall the experience obtained there would, it was a greatly valuable experience, greatly valued experience. So um, on to my project, uh, I was in the Department of Machinery and Control Systems where my main objective was to identify a model for the artificial muscle using water as a pressure medium. In my presentation I basically go over my project and its importance and under that it's the motivation, th my approach and how the mus muscle works as well as my conclusion and the challenges I faced during. So to start off, as the diagram shows, it is the muscle, uh, it's the design of the artificial muscle. So why use a tap water driven artificial muscle? It's to help people with muscle or limb loss. It is the rehabilitation at home for enabling people to walk or move their arms and legs again. So what are the advantages of using water, a tap water driven artificial muscle? It's it uses renewable resources, it requires a minimal power input and causes almost no environmental damage. So as the video shows, uh, as the tap water flows into the muscle, the water makes the muscle contract, um, causing an dis upward displacement of the mass. Then as water flows out of the artificial muscle, the decrease in water causes the muscle to relax and then the weight is once again displaced, but this, this time in a downwards direction. And then the cycle repeats itself until enough data is obtained. So how to obtain the artificial muscle model? So we use the ideology of a mass spring damper system and the kinematics of how it functions. And by combining those two, we can finally um, formulate the artificial muscle model equation. So to formulate the artificial muscle model equation, you, you, we used the, a set input and then we measured the muscle displacement. So then after obtaining those two, we could say, we could formulate an equation for the artificial muscle, where our unknown parameters are A, A1, A2, B1 and B2. And then by using the same uh, input, UK, U, yeah, UK. Uh, we can then plug that into our ma mathematical model and then we can calculate our estimated muscle displacement, the Y hat K. And then by using that formula we can find our estimated parameters of A1 hat, A2 hat, B1 hat and B2 hat. And then the difference between Y hat K and Y K is then our estimated error. So after finding our artificial muscle model equation, we have to obtain, well, we need to minimize our error. We do this by finding the squared of the error. That is basically just to um, compensate for the positive and negative uh, direction of the error. And then by using a cost function, we can calculate J, which is half of the squared error. After we have calculated J, we can partially derive J to in respect to A hat 1, A hat 2, B hat 1 and B hat 2. And then by using the parameter update law, we can calculate A hat 1 K plus 1, which is basically the step after K. And the second term in the parameter update law is basically the partial differentiation we calculated in the previous step. So then uh, we were supposed to um, loop our mathematical model so that we can obtain a large set of results and as the screen shows um, it is my code the first part is basically just my variables and what it defines the second part is me looping the equations and then finally it's me plotting the graphs uh, so the results we obtained um, as the graph shows, the artificial muscle model and the estimated muscle displacement are extremely similar. So, and then for finding our accurate par parameters, we can loop the mathematical model and we find that our model is similar, our model displacement is similar to the artificial muscle model displacement. So then as they are similar, we can say that our mathematical model um, represents the artificial muscle dynamics. 
So then in conclusion, after looping all our equations and then finally plotting our graphs, we can find, well, we see that at the start, the estimated parameters oscillate greatly. And then after we have minimized our error, uh, we find that the oscillations reduced and the parameters values remain reasonably constant. So thus we can then find the actual value of our parameters a hot 1, a hot 2, b hot 1 and b hot 2. And so then from the previous equation we can then calculate the actual equation for the mathematical model. So then the challenges I faced during the internship, it was basically, well, the mo most paramount of the challenges was getting over the language barrier, but luckily we had Google Translate to assist us in that thing, and also the coding, as it was my first time doing such. The experience of Tokyo in general was, I really enjoyed it. The food, the people, how nice they are, how they respect you even though they don't know you, and Tokyo is much smaller than you'd think it is with the amount of people living there. But in general, I really enjoyed my experience there and I would greatly recommend it to anyone else trying to look for internships around the world.